And because if you only believe in God, there are various explanations of God. Yeah. Explanation given by Jew is different. Explanation by Christian is different. Explanation by Hindu is different. The explanation given by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final revelation. And he has been prophesied in all the scriptures. He's been prophesied in the Christian of the, the scriptures of the Jews. He's been prophesied in the Christian of the scriptures of the Christian. He's been prophesied in the scriptures of the Hindus. And all these scriptures say that the last and final messenger to come is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So by believing in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you're believing in all the other religions also that the last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So can I conclude that if I become a Muslim, I can... Uh, no, I'm also a Christian. Not you are a Christian, you believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Because Jesus Christ never teach Christianity, sister. Jesus Christ himself did not call himself a Christian. Do you know that? Yeah, I know. So why should you call? So if you become a Muslim, you believe in all the messengers, yes. And you believe in one true God and you submit your will to God if you become a Muslim. Okay. And you have to respect all the messengers. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Okay. So would you like to become a Muslim? Not yet. <laughs> Gautama was sitting in a large congregation of people one morning. A man arrived and stood there in the shadows. This man is a great devotee. He is a devotee of Rama. You heard of Rama? Rama is uh, one of the most popular deities in India. If you do not already know this, in India we have thirty-six million gods and goddesses. It's a very rich country. He is a great devotee of Rama. The devotees in India, not now and not everybody, but those who take this seriously, they will not utter any other word than the name of God that they believe in. So if they want you to come, they'll say, Ram Ram. If they want you to go, Ram Ram. If they want something, Ram Ram. No other word but Ram. Their clothes are all printed Ram Ram, they utter only Ram Ram, they live Ram Ram. They devoted their whole life to God. You are smart, you are not like that. You kept, you kept God like insurance. Just in case something goes wrong, I have also paid my premium. <laughs> hmm? Everything that you need to do, you do it yourself. You kept God like insurance. You're smart. But this man invested his whole life in God, total. Age is passing away, little doubt has come. It's a little doubt, he knows there is God, just a little doubt. Now there is an enlightened being here, he wants to confirm. But after being a well-known devotee for a long time, because he did not just go to the temple, he built many temples. At this stage in his life, how to ask whether there is God or not now? So he came early morning, stood in the shadows there and asked this inevitable question, is there God? Gautama looked at the man and gave a clear, emphatic no. Here this large congregation of disciples, this has always been a struggle in their, their mind, is there God or no God, is there God or no God. Oof! One big relief. Whenever they ask such a question to Gautama, he just becomes silent, he doesn't say anything. For the first time he gave a clear answer, no God. Joy spread across the congregation. Just the struggle is that God or no God is over. The enlightened one has declared there is no God. The message spread across the town. Through the day celebrations happened because just imagine the freedom of it. No God means nobody sitting up there keeping accounts 
of what you did and what you did not do to punish you, burn you in hell or do this or that. Life is completely yours. So through the day, celebrations happened. Everybody is in great joy. The evening, once again the congregation is sitting, another man came. He also standing in the shadows. This man is a charvaka. Charvaka means, in India there are groups of people who are known as charvakas. These charvakas are out and out materialists. They don't believe anything other than what they can see. So this is an expert charvaka. Whatever kind of believer you are, if you talk to him for ten minutes, he'll prove to you no God. For thousands of people, he's proved no God, no God, no God. Age is passing, little doubt has come. Suppose there is God. Now there's an enlightened being here, he wants to confirm. So he appeared there in the evening. And he asked the same inevitable question, is there God? Gautama looked at the man and said, yes. Once again turmoil started. Morning he said, no God, they were all really happy. In the evening he says, there is God. So what's the game Gautama is trying to play? See, if you believe there is God or if you believe there is no God, you are in the same boat, you believe something that you do not know. I believe this, you believe that, doesn't make any difference. You can believe whatever you want, yes? Everybody can believe whatever they want. It need not have anything to do with reality as such. If you see, I do not know, the longing to know will arise within you. If the longing arises, the seeking arises. If the seeking arises, the possibility of knowing exists.